Welcome to our sixth part of our Households of Faith study. As we're exploring what a spiritually vibrant home looks like. So far we've talked about what a household is and we're in our second part of three different pillars of a spiritually vibrant home. We wrapped up spiritual rituals or spiritual practices last week or last time and now we are on to spiritual conversations. You know, I don't think there's anything that makes Christians squirm more in their seat than the question, when's the last time you shared Jesus with someone? Or when's the last time you talked about Jesus? For most of us, that brings up a question about evangelism. When's the last time you shared the gospel with someone? But for others of us, it makes us feel shameful or guilty We're afraid that we haven't done that recently. But I think that the reason we get so squirmy is that you and I have a limited understanding, a limited idea of what it means to have a spiritual conversation. So what is a spiritual conversation? Well, it's simply what it is. It's a conversation about in which you talk about in any way God, Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, or your faith in your life. It's not necessarily a long, deep, drawn-out, faith-questioning, salvation-seeking conversation. Well, it certainly can't be those things. It's not limited to that. That's that narrow understanding. So let me give you a few examples of spiritual conversations. We hear this one from the Gospel of Luke between the disciples after Jesus has rose from the dead. Now on that day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Listen to this. They were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and debating these things, Jesus himself approached them and began to accompany them. Their eyes were kept from recognizing them. Then he said to them, What are these matters you are discussing so intently as you walk along? The disciples were having a spiritual conversation about what had happened and how in the ways in which their thoughts and expectations were not realized. They were having a spiritual conversation. Anytime that you might have a devotion with your family, obviously that's a spiritual conversation. Or any time you might just mention to your neighbor about a trial of faith that you're having. That's a spiritual conversation. Or a time when you talk with another one of your family members about a way in which God is working in your life or you think that God is moving or leading you. That's a spiritual conversation. Literally, any time that you talk about God and your faith, you're having a spiritual conversation. It doesn't have to be... If you died tonight, do you know where you'd go? So let's go to the research. Here's two takeaways about spiritual conversations and households that Barna found in their studies. First one, that most conversations, most of these spiritual conversations that households had happened where I'm sitting, at a dinner table. This is our dinner table in our house. And this is where a lot of our spiritual conversations happen. Over a meal, as we recount the day, as we think about what's happened to us, as we process through that, as we share the joys and the struggles of life together and the ways in which we see God and the ways in which we feel God's absence even sometimes. It seems to be that the dinner table was the common place It was the regular place for these conversations to happen. The second thing that they found is that most families, most households have someone, the individuals have someone that they can go to for encouragement in their faith, with words, that is, to have spiritual conversations with them, almost a mentor, if you will whether that be encouraging them to go to church, talking to them about their faith tradition or their teachings or their doctrine, or just someone to check in on them and see how their faith is doing in their life. 
And while grandparents were first on that list from the research, mothers and fathers were not far behind as well. So as we think about spiritual conversations, where they happen and who they happen with, I want to give you two discussion questions today. Where do spiritual conversations happen for you most? And how could you establish practices that enable and encourage more spiritual conversations to just naturally happen? And question number two, how do you use your influence? We all have influence, no matter what our vocation is, whether that would be grandfather, grandmother, father, son, daughter, brother, sister. How do you use that influence to encourage people in their faith? Think about those things today. Our take-home idea today is a gratitude conversation starters for family. If you're looking for some help and some guidance in starting those conversations, especially this one about gratitude and being thankful for what God has given to you, we'll put the link in the description for the video for you to click on that one. Next time we continue our spiritual conversations as we look at what people talk about, specifically the ways in which they ask for help. Join us next time on Spiritual Households of Faith.